of the game as we come up on a minute of Horton running on fumes with 45 points. At the end of the game, we got to get it out of here. Looked like he jumped out of the mezzanine to dunk this ball. That said, oh, he took it all the way down. Scott Skiles waiting underneath the basket. Michael just spread eagle almost right over the top of Skiles. In this video, I will talk about why LeBron James is the GOAT. first argument I always hear is MJ's 6-0 and LeBron is 4-10. But what people don't talk about is the context around it. They just say 6-0 and it ends right there. But if it ends right there, that means that Bill Russell would be the GOAT. As you can see, Bill Russell has five more rings than MJ, but we all know the context around MJ's rings, so that's why we rank him higher. For example, you can see that LeBron James averaged more points, rebounds, and assists than Michael Jordan yet he lost that finals and MJ won his finals. Comparing the stats, you can see that MJ averaged more points, LeBron James averaged more rebounds and assists, MJ had more steals, he tied in blocks, LeBron shot better from field goal percentage, shot better at the three point land, and MJ shot better at the free throw. So they're pretty similar, pretty even. The next topic is that people just say that LeBron doesn't have that killer mortality or he's just not clutch. And that's just simply not true. He's one of the most clutch players ever, one of the best scorers ever, statistically. As Fat Show, as my boy JJ Reddick is going to explain. First Take last week had a segment. The question was, is LeBron James an all-time scorer? You view LeBron as an all-time great scorer. You know, it's weird. I kind of don't. I just want to point a couple things out. LeBron James, he's got the fifth highest career scoring average all-time in the NBA. Jordan is first. Wilt just behind him. The next three, Elgin Baylor, Kevin Durant, LeBron James. It's not a, just a longevity thing. Better shooting percentage from two than Kevin Durant. Way better than Kobe. Better than Jordan. Ninth all-time in threes. The constant narrative about nitpicking things with LeBron, most of them are just not factual. LeBron James is not clutch. LeBron James has five game-winning buzzer beaters in the playoffs, the most ever in NBA history. Oh, is LeBron sorry. James clutch? You could make the argument he's the most clutch player ever. LeBron James, is he an all-time great scorer? No, he is the all-time greatest scorer. The next thing I hear a lot of is that LeBron just could not handle the 80 and 90s physical defense and really it wasn't as physical as everyone thinks it is. I mean, Le even if it was LeBron 6'9", 240, I'm sure he'll be just fine as these clips provide the proof. Longer travel. Nobody else is able to get this shot off. That's grown man strength. Hardaway wraps himself around and he's... And Diaw wraps him up. He still puts it up and in. Here's James. And Bonner grabs him. And he puts it in. They count it. I'm, I'm gonna, let me educate you for a second, Stephen A. Please, this is important because this gets brought up all the time. I'm going to educate you for a second because I have a basic understanding of NBA rules. First of all, hand checking. You weren't allowed to do it in the scoring area. Secondly, illegal defense. How many times have we seen LeBron James isolated on the left wing and, and seen that, that secondary defender flood the box? It's called flooding the, the box and coming all the, all the way across. That's illegal defense. In the NBA, in the 80s and 90s, you could not leave your man. So, yes, there's more space now. There's also more help. You think about last night and watching him score, taking on two defenders every single time. And by the way, the Jordan rules, I get it, man. There was more physicality for sure. A lot of that was just harder fouls. A lot of that was just harder fouls. Well, you know, Go watch the 1993 NBA Finals against the Phoenix Suns and well, well, tell me that was a physical well, well, series. Well, 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 first of all, go watch, go watch. I watched, I've watched every game. Team in the league that substitute for defense. Rodman in there, it usually picks up their defensive tempo. Benny Johnson's gonna have When he was booed, of course, they booed Dear Abby as well that day. So tough on Dave Corzine, but now he's one of the favorites. Foul. Eight and a half minutes here in the first half. Johnson fouled by Paxson. Now pops out for the long one. Dumars one on one against Jordan. Wire eyeing him if he came toward the paint, but he goes baseline. And Michael, as he does so well, waves him out. And I thought this was a pretty good defensive play by Rick Mahorn. But of course, the one valid thing that MJ supporters always bring up is the 2011 finals. It's the one stain on LeBron's legacy. 
And really, there was just no excuses. LeBron played terrible. But a lot of people act like the Mavs were just a terrible team that beat LeBron as well. But that's just simply not true. They did beat the Los Angeles Lakers. Kobe Bryant was in his prime. But yeah, LeBron, this was one of the one stain in his history. And I had to, had to speak on it. Now, this is the uh, one main thing for me that makes LeBron the GOAT for me. They're MJ and LeBron, they're very close. A similar, you know, MJ got two more rings, one more MVP, one more defensive play of the year, but LeBron averages more rebounds, more assists. He's more proficient. But this is the one thing for me that, in particular, that makes LeBron the GOAT is that when MJ was on the team, they had 57 wins. But when he left the team the next year, they had 55 wins. You tell me that the GOAT, the best player ever, his team is two wins worse without him. I just can't, I just can't accept that. I just cannot accept that. And you can see LeBron when he was on the Cavs in 2009, they had 61 wins with the players that we can't even remember. And the next year, the same team had 19 wins. That's the impact that he brings. As you can see, when he had the Wade Wade and Chris Boss, he had 54 wins. And then when he left, the very next year, 37 wins out the playoffs. Still had Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. Then you can see when LeBron went back to the Cavs, he had 50 wins. And the next year when he left, 19 wins. Huge difference. Just to sum everything up, LeBron's my GOAT because he has the most points in NBA history. Even though he's a pass first, he's one of the best passers ever. He's one of the best scorers ever. Good rebounder, great defender. He's been playing for 21 years, just dominating consistently. His ability to just elevate his team to rise of what they're capable of to get to the finals eight years in a row he's the GOAT and this next clip is of Nick uh, kind of roasting Jordan with all due respect but I just completely agree with it but I had nowhere where to throw that in so I'm throwing it in at the end thanks for watching we pretend Jordan's career was six years long. Can we show guys who won rings in years Michael Jordan played? Well, Larry won, Kareem won, Magic won, Isaiah won, Akeem won, Drexler won, Shaq won, Kobe won, David Robinson, Tim Duncan won. Before Scottie Pippen got there, a total and complete loser. Not just one and nine in the playoffs, never even above 500 in the regular season. Do you know how many teams in the East Jordan's entire title run had more than one Hall of Famer. One, the team Michael was on. There were three super teams in the East, the Celtics, the Pistons, and the Magic. His career playoff series record against those three teams, two and six.